All right, you guys, I want to talk about section 2.2, which is on biconditionals and definitions. And I'm assuming that your vocab packets are done and you already know what a biconditional is. And don't forget, with letters, biconditional means P if and only if Q. And I want to talk about what this really means, okay, and how we're going to use them. All right, so we have two, we have two, two conditional statements that the word by means two so by conditional means two conditional statements at the exact same time and I use I use the word I F F to stand for if and only if just so you know this equals if and only if I like to use that because it's easier to write it's like a shortcut all right, so I want to give you this example, and it says, um, consider this true conditional statement. So they're saying to you, this is a true statement. Um, write its converse, and if the converse is also true, combine the statements as a biconditional. So you can only write a biconditional if both the conditional and the converse are true. So both must be true. in order to write a biconditional. All right, let's see if this is true. All right, this this is my hypothesis. This is my conclusion. And in order to write the converse, I have to switch these. So the first direction say write its converse. So I'm going to do to do that. So I write if x squared equals 25, comma, then x equals 5. And then I have to ask myself, is this converse true or false? Um, unfortunately, this converse is false. And the reason why because x could equal negative 5 as well. So this is false, therefore I cannot write a biconditional. So can't do. Let's talk about part b. If x equals 5, then x plus 15 equals 20. This is my hypothesis, and this is my conclusion. I'm going to switch these around. So I'm going to write, if x plus 15 equals 20, comma, then x equals 5. This statement is true. Because it's true, I am allowed to write a biconditional. So in order to write the biconditional, what you do is you take off the word if and you take off the word then. You're going to just remove them. And right in the middle of the statement, you're going to replace this with the words if and only if. This is where the IFF goes. So here's what it looks like x equals 5 if and only if x plus 15 equals 20. This is my biconditional statement. So you remove the word if, you remove the word then, you replace the then with if and only if. So where the then normally goes, don't forget, this is where the then normally goes. It was replaced with the if and only if. Okay, um, go ahead and get yourself caught up with that, and I'm going to go on with the next example. Clear my ink. All right, example number two. Write the two statements that form this biconditional. Now, this time they're going backwards. They're giving you the biconditional. Here, 
is the word if and only if. We're going to go backwards. We're going to re get rid of this and replace it with the word then. And I'm going to put the word if in front. Now I can write one of my very first statement. So I can write if lines are skew. comma, then they are non-complainer. Now don't forget, we can flip-flop the hypothesis and the conclusion to write the converse. So my converse is if now, I'm not going to start off with they. What does they refer to? The they refers to as lines. So, if lines are non-coplanar, then They are skew. And I wrote the two statements that form the biconditional. Okay, we're going to do it again with example B. Okay, don't forget, we take out this statement, cross it off. We're going to replace this with the word then. We're going to put the word if in front. Now I'm ready to write my two statements. If two lines are, I'm going to abbreviate perpendicular with a symbol, comma, then they meet to form right angles. Now we're going to flip-flop the hypothesis and the conclusion. This is my hypothesis. This is my conclusion. We're going to flip-flop them. Don't forget, what does the word they refer to? They refers to the two lines. Okay, here I go. If, I'm not using the word they, I'm using two lines. I write two lines meet to form right angles, comma, then they are perpendicular. And I'm done with this next example. Okay, one more. Let me scroll up. and clear my ink. Okay, last example. Is the following statement a good definition? Explain. A good definition has to be reversible to make it good. So it, you must be able to have the converse of the statement be true. So a good definition must be reversible. That means you can say it backwards and it can still be true. Okay, let's see what I'm talking about. I find the word is. This is my verb. I'm going to reverse this statement to see if it sounds right. Now, an apple is a fruit that contains seeds. That's true. It makes sense. But if it's a good definition, I should be able to say it backwards. Think. A fruit that contains seeds is 
an apple. True or false? That's the question. A fruit that contains seeds is an apple? Well, this is false. Why? It could be an orange. Because an orange contains seeds. It's a fruit. So this is a false statement. So is this a good definition? No, it's not a good definition. It's not a good definition. Because you can't reverse it. I'm running out of room. Let me move this up a little bit. Because you can't reverse it. You can't say it backwards. All right, folks, I'm done with your notes. What I want you to do is take the following mini quiz that's after this uh, video and take this quiz on your notes, it's on your notes, and I want to see if you can answer those questions at the bottom of your notes. We're going to go over those questions um, in the very beginning of the class to make sure you understand it. So right here is your quiz. Let me get rid of my ink. So you have five questions. I want you guys to do these on your own when you're done to see if you can answer these, and we'll go over these in class. All right, you have a great day. Bye.